If I climb up to heaven, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your right hand shall hold me fast. Last autumn there was a short but powerful television series called The Big Silence. Five people were led by the Benedictine monk Christopher Jameson in a sequence of experiences of silence. In their different ways they found out things about themselves and heard the voice of God. In one episode they are at a Jesuit retreat house making an eight-day silent retreat. One of them goes to sit in the chapel, picks up a Bible, and it falls open at Psalm 139, which we just heard read. We see the amazing impact it has. The woman had never heard such a passionate and intricately detailed account of God's love for her. The book didn't fall open in that place by fluke. Psalm 139 is a cardinal text in the Jesuit tradition, that tradition of spirituality founded by the founder of the Jesuits, Saint Ignatius. One of his great insights was that we best prepare for penitential self-examination by first contemplating the astonishing love that God has for us. The psalm is a masterpiece, a masterpiece of literary construction and a masterly account of the richness of God's relationship with us. It begins in God's knowledge of us, of what we do, what we say, what we think. It's a knowledge, in the psalmist's words, too wonderful for me, a knowledge which shows us that God's very spirit is immediate, constantly present to us. And this is no baleful lurking at our shoulder. His right hand holds us fast and darkness loses its power. There's more. The God who knows us so intimately and guards us so closely is the God who made us, whose creative regard began before we were first knitting together in the womb, when we were, in that extraordinary phrase, woven in the depths of the earth. The psalmist had an intimation about evolution many centuries before Darwin. And however long we take to ponder or try to fathom this incalculable depth of knowledge and care and creative power, when we stop, to draw breath, we are still in his presence. Gerard Manley Hopkins, the poet who was also a Jesuit priest, knew this well. He knew the grandeur of God in all its flame-filled glory. He also knew what our smears and smudges look like. We can't fail to recognize our own shortcomings in the light of such grandeur, but he knew too that the inner light of that grandeur will not abandon us. God's Holy Spirit over the bent world broods with warm breast and bright wings. This knowledge is wonderful and our very creation is wonderful too, but it is fearful. So it fills us with proper awe. And as we dare to give rein to that awe, what do we find? What do we look like?